Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today on Faith to Live By. This is Sue Taylor. You know, Proverbs 24.10 tells us that if you falter in times of trouble, how small is your strength? What a wonderful scripture for all of us when affliction and trouble come our way. God does not want us to falter or to faint under trial or trouble. In fact, if we do falter, this verse reminds us that our strength is small. And if we are trying to use our own strength in times of trouble, we will falter. But if we lean on and trust in our blessed Lord, His great strength will sustain us through all trouble and trial. You know, the Word of God is full of examples and teachings of Christ which tell us that trouble will come and affliction will come. And we should not be surprised when it does, for we've been told, while you are in this world, you will have trouble and you will have tribulation. Why do afflictions come and to whom do they come and what are we to do with them when they do come? First of all, afflictions are often blessings in disguise. Job reminds us in 517, Blessed is the man whom God corrects. Do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. Now how are we to be blessed from a great affliction or trouble? We don't know sometimes until we come through it and we are on the other side. Or maybe we may not even know it until we reach heaven. But this verse in Job tells us that blessed is the man. And the Apostle Paul also says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs outweighs them all. So sometimes only heaven and eternity will reveal the blessings in disguise of an affliction. We also know from the word in Psalm 119 that sometimes trouble and affliction are meant to bring us closer to God or to bring us back to himself because maybe we have strayed. It says, before I was afflicted, the psalmist declares, I went astray, but now I obey your word. Affliction and trouble many times are sent to get our attention and to focus more on what is really important and to draw us back to our Heavenly Father. Secondly, we can trust and be at peace and rest during times of trouble and affliction. For the Word tells us that God allows the trouble and the affliction. If you are a child of God, you do not have to fear, beloved, because God knows what is happening, and He allows it. In Deuteronomy 8, 5, He says, Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. And Naomi in the book of Ruth, when returning to her homeland, said, Don't call me Naomi. She told them, Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. She knew her God, and she knew that he had disciplined her somehow and allowed the afflictions in her life. Yet she still loved him and followed him and followed hard after him and devoted her heart to him. No man or woman, however godly, are exempt from affliction or trouble. Just as Naomi and Job saw a new great affliction, so have countless other men and women of God down through the history of time have known the great trials and afflictions. Great ministers and prophets are among the afflicted. In the 24th chapter of Ezekiel, he says, So I spoke to the people in the morning, and in the evening my wife died. The next morning I did as I had been commanded. God had commanded Ezekiel to speak to the house of Israel regarding the desecration of his sanctuary. And he did so even though his wife had died. The Lord told him in verse 17, Groan quietly, do not mourn for the dead, but keep your turban fastened and your sandals on your feet. Wow! God was using Ezekiel as an example to the children of Israel in the midst of his suffering and his affliction. May the Lord grant us the grace, beloved, not to waste our suffering, but to be an example of his great grace and peace even in the midst of our trouble and our affliction. 
Not only are our afflictions blessings in disguise, and not only are they permitted by God and sent from God at times, and not only are we not exempt from them, no matter who we are, but lastly, we are not to faint under trial or trouble or affliction. The great Apostle Paul gives us some great encouraging words about fainting not. He tells us not to lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. We may be pounded on every side by affliction, dearly beloved, by financial pressure and setback, by sickness, by loneliness, by wayward children, but we are not to lose heart. We as Christians all have a ministry, and it's always right where we are, and people are watching. Therefore, it says, since through God's great mercy, we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Who knows, beloved saint, but that your suffering and your affliction at this moment and how you are going through it is but a great witness for those looking on. So as the old song goes, cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine, we'll understand it all by and by. For he knows the way that I take, and when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Take the high road with Jesus today in your afflictions and your trouble, and he will see to it that you will come out on the other side much better than you went in. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor, 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, contact Sky High Radio at 417 451-5636.